In this video, we're going to be going over accounts, specifically USA Screen Account Screen, USAS Web Accounts, and the cross-reference program. USA Screen Account Screen and USAS Web Accounts can be used for your routine maintenance of accounts. That's modifying, adding, deleting, um, although it's not recommended to delete accounts without running the delete account program first to make sure that it qualifies to be deleted. Um, let's go ahead and go into account screen. To get to account screen, you have to go first into USA screen, and it's going to be option number one. Once you're in account screen, you're going to see a find line and a mask line. A find line, they're both search options. The find is going to bring up what you put into the search and then anything after it in the account file, whereas the mask field is going to pull in just exactly what you entered in um, that field. So just kind of for an example, I'm going to use the mask, and I'm going to pull in budget accounts at the start with a fund of 200, and it's going to bring up only accounts matching that. If I would perform that same search on the find field, it's going to bring up everything that matches it plus any accounts following it that appear in the account file. Um, I prefer to only see exactly what I'm looking for, so I prefer to use the mask field. Um, but either one of those is going to give you the search of what you're looking for. If I put in just a fund of 200 and in my search, it's going to pull up everything that matches the 200, which is inclusive of the cash, appropriation, budget, and revenue account. Um, and that's denoted by your TI. To move around an account screen, you have your function keys at the bottom of the screen. These could look differently to different users depending on how their keyboard mapping is set up. Um, and you can change that through the keyboard mapping as well. If I want to go in to display the details of an account, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to line up on the um, record that I want to look at. And then in my case, I'm going to hit the PF4 to display it. And that's going to bring me in here. Um, from here, I can see the account, the description. I can see fiscal year to date, month to date, and calendar year to date information, as well as any, any other information pertaining to this account. Um, I happen to be looking at a cash account. So I'm also going to see bank codes, fund types, um, and so forth. You'll notice that this is sc <coughs> screen one of two. So I'm going to just page down, and I'm going to see the rest of that screen then and that's going to show me my remaining balances that I have. You also on the right-hand side have project to date information if it's being tracked um, and user-defined information at the bottom. I can go on to the next record from here, and the next record would be what was displayed in my listing that I did on my search. Um, so it's just going bringing up the next 200 cash account. <coughs> if I'm done looking in here, I can go ahead and F8 and it's going to take me back to my search field. Um, I can add an account from here by using my F12, and then I can specify whether I want it to be cash, appropriation, budget, or revenue. I can delete an account, and I can also modify. Um, one thing that you can do in account screen that you cannot do in use as web accounts is the mass add. And what the mass add does is it's going, you can specify an old fund special cost center and then a new fund special cost center. And it's going to take any accounts that are in the old fund special cost center and create a new account with the new fund special cost center associated with that. It's a very popular option for your grant accounts that you're constantly adding those every year. So we'll just walk through an example of doing the mass add. Here it's asking me for my old account fund special cost center, and then it's asking for my new one. I can give the description of my new cash account, so I can leave it be Title One, and maybe I want this to be for fiscal year 18. Then for the rest of the underlying accounts, I have the ability to use the old account description, so what I would have specified for it last year, <clears throat> the revised code description coming from AOS, or I can just leave it blank and go in and change, update that as I need to. I'm going to go ahead and use the old account description, and then if I need to make any changes, I can just modify those accounts. Then I have the ability that I can mass add or I can cancel. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to mass add. Once it's gone through and done that, it's going to give me a mass add text file to let me know <clears throat> exactly what was created in this run and then what those descriptions are with those accounts. So in order to see that, I have to add, exit out of um, account screen. And it's just a nice little summary description saying this is my account number, this is my description, and whether it was added successfully or not. This one was. If I needed to, I could then go in to account screen. And I'm going to look for those newly created ones I did. If I needed to change the description, I could at this time if I wanted to. And then I can go ahead and accept those modifications. And now you can see my new description. I can go ahead and I'm going to F8 out of here. And now I'm going to go ahead and go into USAS Web Accounts. In here, the accounts are structured just so where you go to find them is not one specific spot like what account screen was. Um, and we could see all the cash, appropriation, budget, revenue in one area. This one's kind of in one area, but it's got different query screens for each type of account that you have. So it's underneath accounts on the menu, but then if you're looking for a specific cash account, you could then go here, query it, or create a new one. Um, appropriation accounts, you're only going to be able to query because I have my budget accounts linked. Um, and then budget, I can do new, query, and revenue is new and query. Each one of the queries looks just slightly different based on the account code, that you, <clears throat> the account that you're looking for. So this is just a quick query of all of the cash accounts that I have on file. I could put in, if I just wanted to look for 500, I could put in a five and it's going to bring up everything that matches that. Um, some fields do allow for wildcards and they're going to be denoted with a red asterisk beside it. So if I know that I was looking for title accounts but I don't have any other information, I could wrap it in wildcards, meaning that it can be anywhere in the description. <clears throat> if I would drop the wild card in the front and only have it at the end. I'm now saying that it has to start with the word description or this, the word title. If I take it off the end and only put it in the front, then I'm saying that it can only have the word title at the very end of the description. Your maximum account displayed um, default is 50, but it can go to a max of 250, and that holds true for all queries inside of USAS Web. Let's go to the budget query. Pretty much the same thing, it just looks a little different because budget accounts have quite a few bit more uh, account dimensions on them. So it's going to list all those and then you can find, you can click anywhere to bring up that information so you can see the detailed information. And it looks exact same information as what there is in account screen. This is just out in the web on one screen versus the two screens. When you're looking at an account, you can create a new one here. You can modify this existing one. You can clone it, which means it's going to take all of this information, put it onto a new record, and you then have to specify the account dimensions. And then you can also delete this. One thing I want to mention with the um, status and then also the start and stop dates, those are going to affect if you put an active, inactive status on a cash account, it automatically affects all underlying appropriation budget and revenue. Same thing for the appropriation account. If you make it inactive, then you're putting all of the budget accounts underneath that appropriation account inactive. <coughs> Next thing we're going to look at is the XREF program. What the XREF program is, is you can use cross XREF codes for an account string. Instead of putting in the 30 digits for an account string, you could maybe just put in, um, it can be up to six characters. So that could be alphanumeric. So you could put in NHS, and maybe that's going to be your National Honor Society expense account. 
<coughs> if you choose to do so. In UCAS DAT, in the configuration screen, there is a field that says you use cross-reference accounts. If this is set to no, you will not even see that option on your account. If it's marked a yes, you're going to see that field, so you could enter it if you wanted to. <coughs> so going into the program XREF, in here you can add a code, change one, delete one, look at one, um, move all the account descriptions from the account file to the cross-reference file, purge all of them, move account descriptions from or purge them from the XREF codes, or you can generate a report. I'm going to go ahead and start off in generating a report. <clears throat> I can do a standard one, budget revenue accounts with no cross-reference code, or I can have three cross-reference code with no corresponding account. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the standard report. I don't want to choose any specific OPUs. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to see it for all funds. And then how do I want this um, sorted? I'm going to do it by account number sequence. Do I want to report double-spaced? I don't need to. This is going to pull my configuration information um, to put on the heading of my report. So let's go ahead and view this. So looking at this, I have three cross-reference codes. This is the cross-reference code that can be up to the eight, six characters, alphanumeric, the account code that it corresponds with, and then the description with that account code. So I'm just going to go ahead and take one of these down. I'm going to go back into the cross-reference XREF codes, and this time I'm going to change one, and it's going to be for a budget account. Cross-reference code is going to be ART. Is this the correct record? Yes. Do I want to change the description? No. Is this correct? Yes. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and add a cross-reference code for a budget account. This is what I want to give it, NHS, and it's going to be So now if I run that same report, we're going to see we had three, and now we're going to see that we have four of them listed. And there's my newly created one. And then when I'm processing, doing requisition <clears throat> or purchase orders, I can put in just NHS, and it's going to bring that into the full account code description or full account code for me. I do want to make note that um, in your reports that come off of the account file are going to be like your fin sum, your bud sum, your rev sum, and your app sum. And those can be you can watch in a different webinar on detailed explanations of those. But what those reports are is that they're reporting off of the account file what you see. Um, FinSum is going to be your cash, BudSum is your budget, RevSum is your revenue, and AppSum is going to be your appropriations. 